really does help us. So thank you so much for that. Um, all right. So next, we're going to be talking about Jordan Montgomery. Um, so now some surprising news came out, and that was him going back to Texas is unlikely. Now, this came as a real shocker to me because I thought him going back to Texas was the most likely option of the Forest Four for Aiden's left. Um, so, yeah, I kind of thought, OK, Montgomery wants to be back in Texas. Texas needs pitching. They want him back as well. It just makes too much sense and it's going to happen eventually. But no, um, Rangers GM Chris Young came out and said he does not expect many more roster additions which kind of means no more notable roster additions, which Montgomery would definitely fall in the category of. And, you know, some Rangers beat writers come out and said, yeah, we've heard the same thing. You know, we don't, uh, we don't think uh, they're going to add, they're going to bring back Sean Montgomery, which I thought was really surprising. Uh, everything I've read from this offseason was that he wanted to be back in Texas. Uh, the, tex the Rangers wanted him back. They wanted their World Series hero back. So, yeah, it's definitely really surprising to me. Um, he specifically in the, uh, press conference, Chris Young said that the TV deals and uncertain is uncertainty beyond the season, which affects it, uh, for them. Uh, this basically means they don't really know who's, what's going to be going on with their broadcast TV next year. And because of that, it expect it affects budget because they don't know how many people are going to be tuning in. They don't know the difference. And that really affect does affect their money. And you look at all the big contracts they have right now. They have Scherzer, who does expire next year and is getting paid minimum, but he still is there. You have DeGrom, you have Semyon, you have Seager, you have Heaney, you have all these other guys that are definitely good players and definitely worth their contract. It's just you have a lot of them. You have a lot of them. So it does make some financial sense not to bring back Montgomery. I kind of thought, okay, we want to repeat our World Series. Money's not going to matter for right now. Um, but apparently no. So, yeah, um, this is definitely surprising to me. Uh, the impact on the Rangers for 2024 with this is just, I think it's pretty clear. They don't have enough pitching. Your two best pitchers, Max Scherzer, Jacob DeGrom, they're going to be starting the season on IL. We don't know when they'll be back. DeGrom is more of a mystery than Scherzer, I'd say, because DeGrom has had much more injury uh, issues in the past few seasons. Scherzer definitely has. I mean, he got hurt. Uh, you know, he's starting the uh, season on the IL. He probably won't be back till middle of the year. But DeGrom's definitely had more and Scherzer's. They're both old. I don't want to put it that way. And best possible, the most nice way possible, they're both old. They're both older for pitchers. They're going to have injuries. So you have to bring back some pitching depth because you have to combat this. You know, there's going to be injuries as well throughout the season, like guys like Dane Dunning, like Andrew Heaney who are kind of the anchors of irritation right now, which I don't know how I'd feel about that if I was a Rangers fan, who, and I want a, uh, a World Series uh, defend, uh, defending this year. Uh, so Montgomery definitely was going to be back, if he, if he was going to be brought back, which it doesn't look likely right now, um, he brought, definitely would have brought a stabilizing force to that rotation. Uh, just uh, eating innings, you know, you can count on him every day. Uh, to throw, you know, six really good innings. Um, you know, you can, I, this is just really surprising to me. I mean, I don't know what else really to say about this one, but yeah, um, it, it, it really has a big impact on the Rangers. They don't have much pitching right now. I mean, you could argue that they're the third best team in their own division after winning the World Series. The Astros are undoubtedly better right now. The Mariners, you can argue are better with the additions they've made, like Mitch Garver. Um, like Jorge Polanco, so with the young pitching they have. So this is just a big blow to the Rangers, I'd say, big blow to Rangers fans who were expecting him to come back. Yeah, I think most Rangers fans were definitely expecting him to come back. Um, from everything I've, I heard from them and everything I kind of saw on social media was that, okay, we're just going to slot him in. Um, it just made too much sense for him not to come back. It just made sense for him to come back, sorry. Um, and it just really was a great fit for both the team and the player and the fan base. So, yeah, um, it definitely comes as a shock. Um, again, I think it really does affect them for 2024 a lot. They needed more pitching depth. They needed more stable innings. So, yeah, um, I th I'm just going to look now. Where could he go? Um, you you know, you have some fits now where Jordan Montgomery definitely could go. 
um, and what he could be pitching in 2024 and beyond if it isn't the Rangers. I still think the Rangers have a chance to bring him back. Maybe I'm uh, crazy for that one, but who knows? Uh, next, first, we have the Phillies, which I talked about before uh, as a fit. And, you know, I kind of didn't want to spoil the next segment, but that is what I, was, I am going to be talking about the Phillies here. Uh, again, I, ta- I kind of talked about it a lot in the uh, Zach Wheeler segment, but they need pitching. And Zach Wheeler, even though I do think he gets extended, he's a question mark right now. And Mon- bringing in Monty would not only have make you an incredible rotation for 2024, but also give you the oppor- uh, give the opportunity to have a little bit of fallback if Zach Wheeler does not extend. I do expect to extend that uh, Philly should extend him, but you always have to prepare for these things in baseball. Also, if you do sign Montgomery, you can then explore trade options for a guy like Taiwan Walker, who is getting paid a exchange, insane contract for what he brings. Uh, last year, he was kind of the contract that a team gave out that everyone was like, okay, why the hell did they do that? This this is not going to turn out very well, and it didn't. It's kind of like the uh, Hobby Bias Tigers contract, where everyone knew it wasn't going to turn out well except the team that gave it. And then, what, what do you know, first year it didn't go well, and now they want to trade him. You bring a Montgomery in for this year, and maybe even the future, you have you have Wheeler, you have Nola, you have Montgomery, you have Ranger Suarez, you have a chance to bring in a guy like Andrew Painter, one of the top pitching prospects in baseball, up to the big leagues. He has also some injury issues, but he has a pitching prospect, so these things do happen. So yeah, I would really love this move for the Phillies, if I was a Phillies fan. Um, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, the only problem is they, only, they really only have interest in a short-term deal, according to MLB.com. Now, this doesn't make very much sense to me. I understand, I guess they don't want to pay him long term, which may be this problem with other teams as well, which is why he hasn't gotten a contract. But at the same time, you need pitching. And I don't think his AAV should be insane. He, something that's really important here is that he's proven he can pitch in the playoffs. The Phillies have made the playoffs for around three years in a, for three years in a row now, made deep playoff runs three years in a row. So it just makes a lot of sense for the Phillies to bring him in. I don't know why they only give him short-term contracts. I guess because of that, it's probably unlikely, but maybe Monty just wants to reestablish his value, takes a one- or two-year deal that goes on the market next year or the year after and tries to get the big contract he was looking for this offseason. So maybe that uh, can make some sense here. Uh, the Yankees. Uh, I've talked about the Yankees before with Monty, but they make a lot of sense to bring back their old player. Um. Yeah, um, definitely, definitely good. Um, it just makes a lot of sense. Uh, sorry, I keep saying that. Um, what's going on with the Yankees is that they still need pitching. Andy Martino of SNY, who is one of the better Yankees and Mets guys on uh, the entire baseball spectrum, he reported that the Yankees are still looking for pitching, or that's the sense he gets. You know, the Yankees are very familiar with Jordan Montgomery. There's been rumors that you know they wanted him back. There's been rumors that Montgomery has put everything that happened with him being traded in the middle of the season kind of abruptly behind him. So this does make a baseball baseball sense. Um, the Yankees still have money to spend. Stroman is a short-term contract. I don't think you should take away from Montgomery uh, assigning him. It's just you gave Carlos Rodon a seven-year contract last offseason. You have Cole in the contract he has, and he's going he's gonna, to uh, he's gonna trigger his opt-out, which the Yankees will then counter with and do their sign in, I guess, something with his contract, but he'll be there for a long time on a big long-term contract. So financial-wise, I don't know if this makes sense for the Yankees, but baseball-wise, it does. So baseball-wise kind of always trumps that. So I think it could you could look at it uh, as happening here as a fit for the Yankees and for Montgomery. Uh, the Orioles, uh, I'm going to go over it later as well, the more impact, but Cal Bradish put in the IL today. He's kind of questionable for opening day. Uh, I think that uh, even, you know, that has more of an impact for the Orioles potentially signing Jordan Montgomery. Uh, you know, Monty would just bring such another element to this pitching staff. You have Corbin Burns. You have Kyle Bradish, who's good, but again, starting on IL. You bring Montgomery. You have a top three now of Burns, Montgomery, Bradish. That, that can compete with anyone. You saw what Montgomery did to your own team in the playoffs last year. Why don't you bring that to your side, huh? Bring that to your team. Spend some money. Uh, in free agency, Orioles, and get this guy. All right? I mean, he would be a great fit here. Uh, I would really love him in Baltimore. I think he would be a great hit with the fans, him being good in the playoffs. 
uh, is really important for this young team that obviously struggled last year, considering they didn't win, they didn't win one game and got swept after winning 101 in the regular season. So the Orioles make do make some sense. And when we're talking about Montgomery, we have to talk about them. We have to talk about the Red Sox. Um, just the Red Sox make so much sense on paper. It should have been done a long time ago. I just don't think it does because the Red Sox right now are just being kind of cheap. Um, yeah, they just, I mean, it just makes so much sense. His wife works in Boston. He's training in Boston in the offseason. They need a top-line starting pitcher, what I think Montgomery is. They need to spend some money on pitching more than just Lucas Giolito. It just makes so much, so much sense baseball-wise. And the fact that it not, has not happened yet is kind of insane. Um, I, I I still look at this as a fit. I just don't think the Red Sox do it because they've been cheap. They haven't spent much money. So with that, it's just, it's hard for me to imagine it happens, even though it should, and it makes too much sense. Uh, I just, uh, if I was a Red Sox fan, I'd be really, really mad right now. I just... It just makes too much sense, and I really would like it to happen. Maybe it could. Maybe that'll surprise me. Craig Breslow, Red Sox front office, please surprise me. Make a move. Spend some money, huh? You're in a, you're easily the worst team in your division right now, and you're not even that bad. You have building blocks there. You have a guy like Brian Bayo, who I think is a future ace. Raphael Devers, you know, front line of the hitting core. A lot of good prospects coming up, like Marcelo Mayer, like Roman Anthony, like Sedana Rafaela. Um, so try to bridge that gap a little bit. Spend on a big starting pitcher in Montgomery, who I think could make a lot of sense for your team. Um, so yeah, um, just going back to the premise of the whole thing, Jordan Montgomery not going back to Texas, most likely. That just is really surprising to me. I kind of thought it was an unwritten, unspoken thing that, okay, he's just going to return to Texas once the financials and TV deal are right. And the TV deal is right. They spent some money. They spent on David Robertson, you know? So I thought that was kind of a sign that, okay, we're going to spend money now. Montgomery's going to come back. Uh, everything's going to be good in Texas. But apparently not. So, yeah. Um, definitely, definitely surprising. But that's how this baseball market works. You really don't know what's going to go on anymore. And just... The impact overall on it and overall in baseball. I think they should bring him back. I said why depth, stability to that rotation, which you don't have right now, and I think Montgomery brings it. So I don't think it's a great decision, but it's financial wise, so I can't really speak on that. So that was our segment two. Uh, we're gonna have a quick break, but before we go to break, we'll talk about quickly what our 